Right, let us pray. Lord Jesus, thank you for yet another day. Thank you, God, for this morning. And we pray that as we turn to your word, Lord, the Holy Spirit, the inspire of these writings will be our inspiration as we study and learn from them lessons to see us through the course of the day and to inspire us as your witnesses in these last days of and request in Jesus' name. Amen. A good morning to all of you. Uh, I would like us to consider what we have been studying, what we've been sharing about the need for prayer, as indicated in Ephesians chapter five, sorry, first Thessalonians chapter five, verse 17. One of the shortest verses, pray without ceasing. And Today we'll look and first of all consider something that I know most of us have come across or have read about a lot of self-help books on this subject of habits. Okay, so many books written about habits and the need to develop habits. And they're saying, if you have this habit, if you do things this way, you're always going to succeed. And just to appreciate, because this is the deficient from the Merriam-Webster dictionary that a habit is a settled tendency or usual manner of behavior. Elsewhere, it is also defined as an acquired mode of behavior that has become nearly or completely involuntary. And so you do certain things because over time you have wired your brain to do things that way. And you know, recognizing this, People have tapped into the need to explain things and say, look, if we have these habits, you can always be so you can be successful. You can be a great manager, you can be a great coach, you can be a great team player, you can be a great employer or employee. These are the habits of health successful people, habits of great leaders. And you can unlock this part if you continue uh, ex uh, learning these habits and doing them. Uh, the way they are prescribed by others or how others have tried to do things. And so people appreciate some of these things and some of the book, most uh, the selling books we have on the market relate to habits. Okay, people want to learn what are these habits that I can probably pick up on. And today I want to share that in line with prayer. But prayer is a habit of communion with God. It's something we need to pick up. It is something we need to learn. It's something we need to grow because the disciples once asked Jesus, Lord, teach us how to pray that we can learn this habit of prayer. And I want to relate this to uh, it's a number of stories from the Bible that emphasize our need for continual prayer. We'll consider the prophet Daniel. The book of Daniel in chapter 6, chapter 6 of Daniel, verse 10, we read. Now, when Daniel knew that the writing was signed, he went into his house and his windows being open in the chamber toward Jerusalem. He kneeled upon his knees three times a day and prayed and gave thanks before his God as he did aforetime. In other words, what Daniel was doing at that particular time is not something he had just picked up. It is something he had been doing before. Now, the backdrop is that many of Daniel's friends were not exactly happy. Daniel had lived and served, or was, had the opportunity of serving in two great world empires. Now, I don't know how busy you are. I don't know what your call in life is, but this was the experience of Daniel that he served one of the greatest empires, the empire of Babylon. And when Babylon fell and on came Middle Persia, he also served Middle Persia. And verse chapter six from verse one, it says it pleased Darius to set over the kingdom 120 princes, which should be over the whole kingdom. And over these three presidents, and over these three presidents, of whom Daniel was first, that the princes might give account unto them, and the king should have no damage. Then verse 3 says, then this Daniel was preferred above the presidents and princes because he had an excellent spirit. 
and the spirit was in him and the king thought to set him over the whole realm. This is a man who is heading a world empire that the king wants to set him over the whole realm. Yet in verse 10, we get the hint that prayer is something he did always. In fact, his enemies, when they thought or planned to get ways of bringing him down, they could not find any particular cause except as they see. They realized that can only do so if we find it in his custom and his way of worship. This is paramount for us, especially brothers and sisters, in these last days, that a time is going to be when they can only say, and you can only say, except we find it in their ways of worship, especially, except we see that in how they relate to God. And so they caused the King Darius to sign into law uh, a statute that no one should worship God for 30 days. Now, this is not a ban on praying or anything that never pray in your life or what, but just 30 days. This is how the devil inspired these people, that 30 days without praying to God. And you know, we've been looking at the need for prayer. They need to pray without ceasing. They need to have a an activity of prayer in our lives, not just when we are in need, but to tailor it in our day-to-day -day schedules because the devil will recognize that 30 days will just be sufficient to kill off a prayer life of someone like Daniel who from chapter 2 we observe that he had been actually from chapter 1 observe he had been such a prayerful person when set before uh, the king's court and he was expected to eat of the king's food he prayed and reached out and asked can I be can we be spared from this food and be given simply vegetables? And that prayer was answered. In chapter 2, when the king almost executed all the wise men, it was Daniel through prayer who showed up and said, look, let the king not be hasty in his execution, but hold. And he speaks to his friends, he prays, and the Lord answers. Here is a man who is seasoned in prayer. And he's he did that before he rose to power in Babylon, even when he rose to power in Babylon, even when he was a powerful being, an individual in Middle Persia, he was still the prayerful kind. Look, yet for all this, I like to believe this was towards the latter days of his life when this is not happened in chapter 6, but the devil said, look, 30 days, just 30 days. And you're talking about someone who has been praying for maybe the past 20 or 30 years. Yet the devil believed that only 30 days could break Daniel down. How unfortunate that those of us who might just have started praying can easily lose this grip on, on prayer. It is a call for us to see and the need to see that we always need to pray. Otherwise, we might lose the grip on God because if a seasoned prayer man like Daniel could be put on edge by 30 days, how much more when you are not praying? We need to develop this habit as Daniel did, that we need to call upon the Lord every day. Now, it might be three times like Daniel did, or it could be more, it could even be less, but we always are going to be in prayer that we may develop this habit of communing with the Lord. That is what he is calling us to. And notice, Daniel did not fear to pray because this is a habit he had. It was an involuntary, so it was in involuntary mode. He was doing these things not because he was defying the king, but because it's something he had done before. Like that even when the law was signed, it didn't matter to him because this was his habit. If you have a habit of uh, you set times when you have your dinner, when you have your lunch, when you have your breakfast, you find that when you go to a place and it is not exactly the same time that your breakfast is being served, you feel odd, you feel out of sync with yourself, and you need to recalibrate yourself. And so here we are saying, look, we need to learn to have a habit of communion with God in prayer, that we may have this settled tendency or manner or behavior of always praying to the Lord. And we 
like Daniel, might be a herald as communing with God all the time. Now, Daniel opened the windows. You know, he could have easily closed them. But I also wondered, why would Daniel want to close the windows? Or why did he not even close them? And say, look, I cannot hide who I am because this is my identity. It is something that is tied to a promise that uh, at the dedication of the temple, we'll read that in Second Chronicles chapter 6, uh, we'll read verse 21 and says, and may you hear the supplications of your servant and of your people Israel when they pray toward this place here from heaven, your dwelling place. And when you hear, forgive. Later on in verse 38 of the same chapter, we read that when they return to you, with all their heart and with all their soul, in the land of their captivity, when they have where they have been carried captive and pray toward their land which you gave to their fathers, the city which you have chosen, and toward the temple which I have built for your name. Daniel is praying as he claims a promise that a prayer was made at the dedication of the temple and he's saying, Lord. I am one of your I'm one of the sons of your chosen people, and I'm opening these windows in habit every day, and I'm not going to change that regardless of what laws might be signed. Not out of defiance, but out of respect for my God, that I require to have this communion with God, regardless of how it might treat everyone else or anyone else. I want to be able to commune with my God. And it's not about who is going to be happy with this communion because my Lord is happy with this communion and I want to continue in this communion with him. May we learn to have and seek this communion with the Lord. We find that even as a busy man, Daniel was able to maintain this kind of relationship. And then take a look at just Christ in Matthew chapter 14. Verse 22, you find a very busy Christ, yet even in the busyness of this life, Matthew records something that we can read in Matthew chapter 14, verse 22, and it says that Jesus straight and straight away, Jesus called the disciples to get into a ship and to go before him onto the other side while he sent the multitudes away. In verse 23, and when he had sent the multitudes away, he went up into a mountain apart to pray. And when the evening was come, he was there alone. How wonderful that even Jesus needed time alone to pray. We see Daniel needed time alone to pray. Jesus needed time alone to pray. We cannot have any excuse in this day and age that we cannot take off time to pray, that we cannot cultivate this habit of communing with God. It is something we need to have if we are going to experience a continual relationship with the Lord, a relationship that is only uh, revealed when we need, does not amount to a relationship at all. We might only be using prayer as a catalyst but not seeking a relationship. I want us, brothers and sisters, to grow in our relationship with the Lord by seeking him in prayer earnestly and praying that we might have a continual and an everlasting relationship with him. Think of how you're going to live in heaven, in eternity, if you have no communion with the Lord now. It is now that we begin developing these habits and hope that in heaven we'll be able to live out these experiences and we do not pray simply for ourselves because as we notice for example again in Daniel chapter 9 Daniel had he had lived long enough to know about the prophecy that Israel was going to be in captivity for 70 years and there then thereafter be set free yet as these 70 years drew to a close he did not seem to see the sign that they were about to be set free and he recognized that Except as we have true revival and reformation, can we be for, can we be set free? And so in Daniel chapter nine, verse three, the season prayer warrior comes back and says, "And I set my face unto the Lord 
to see by prayer and supplications with fasting and sackcloth and ashes. Right? This is a prayer he makes in the first year of Darius, the son of Ahasuerus, of the seed of the Medes, which was made king over the realm of the Chaldeans. We are talking about someone who has been elevated to power as we read in chapter 6. Yet here he is with prayer and supplication and fasting and sackcloth and ashes. The need to humble ourselves as we commune with the Lord has never been greater as evidenced by the story of, da of Daniel. May that be our call to us Christians. May we see the need that regardless of our expression in society, we have not lost communion with God. Let's not use as an excuse what the, where the Lord has blessed us and what he has given us as the very reason to draw away from him. Rather, regardless of what it is that the Lord has blessed us in, whether it is in society or in our workplaces, may we actually elevate our communion with the Lord and our relationship with the Lord that others might see it as a witness, that they might be called out from wherever they are, seeing how the Lord has indeed blessed you, that you have been faithful, you have a relationship with him, that they too long to have. May that be our need. May that be our desire as we rise up for another day, as we go about our trade cares. May that be our interest. Again, the final of the text as I want to read is that in the third year, Daniel chapter 10, verse 1 says, the third year of Sarah's king of Persia, a thing was revealed unto Daniel, whose name was Belshazzar, and the thing was true. By the time I put it was long, and he understood the thing and had understanding of the vision. And in verse 2, it says, In those days, I, Daniel, was mourning three or four weeks. We're talking about his own prayer, his own prayer warrior, mourning in prayer for about three weeks. You would think this was a time when Daniel, really, with his communion with the Lord, things should always be, you know, fast, whatever he wants to be replied to quickly. Yet even he experienced delays. Why? Because there are battles. Yet he persisted in prayer. May that be our portion to that. Even though you've been praying and getting these answers in times before, like Daniel getting these revelations of dreams and other other people's dreams, visions, yet at this time when he's praying, there is a delay. We may experience a delay in the Lord's response to us, but may we be persistent because it's not just about the well, the delay is about the communion we have even in that delay. May we pursue that. May we seek that this morning. And may that be our experience in Jesus' name. Let us have our word of prayer this morning. Father, thank you for this study. Thank you for this devotion. And we pray, Lord, that as we continue to seek your grace and mercies, as we continue to wander in prayer, that we may learn to pray without ceasing in our experiences. You may reveal to us those things that you want us to address in our lives and also in the lives of our others in the community that we may come to experience our revival and the reformation. We shall pray and request in Jesus' mighty name. Amen.